Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and in this video I want to cover the War Table and basically everything we've got for Season of Defiance. And we've got the Wing of Defiant up here up top. So we've got the War Table and Defiant Battlegrounds. Now, if you've been playing through the weekly story, you guys know Battlegrounds are the big focus. And they've got our wonderful seasonal modifier of power levels. So hero modifiers, basically it's just five points below your power level. So you won't over level them, but at five points below your current power level, or you will be five points um, under the enemy power level, pretty much you're not going to be feeling too bad. It's 1770, so as long as you hit there, you're doing okay. And you've got the Defiant Chest. Uh, consumes a Defiant Key. Currently, it tells me how many I have uh, for greater rewards. Now, you will get some rewards by finishing the activity. If you spend a Defiant Key, like you've acquired a Defiant Key somewhere, and I'll cover what those are in a second, you will basically automatically use one of those up, and you'll get some extra rewards. Now, Defiant Battlegrounds in and of themselves will typically have some type of Consecrated Ground. So you've got Awoken Favors you've acquired are active in this activity, and we'll cover what favors are at the War Table. Some type of champion, so just check what loadout subclass you're on and see if you can be helpful to your team. You're going to have a threat, an increase to incoming damage, and a surge, an increase to outgoing damage. So always check those two. So if it's the threat, and you know maybe you want to come onto your chest piece and you want to change up what your damage is going to be. So if the threat is Arc... Put on an arc resistant and gonna help you. Well, where's arc for real? No, that's arc. I thought it was my harmonic. But yeah, throw on arc resistance. You'll be a little more beneficial than if you realize you've got like, I've got a whole lot of fire, maybe do concussive damper, or I've got a whole lot of enemies that want to get close, go melee, or snipers picking you off, throw one of those on there, match that, and then if you want one more, maybe go damage type. That's probably the best way I'd set you up for the threat. And then for the sur surge, just try and match up your subclass if possible. Weapons, if possible, take advantage of it as much as you can. That's mostly it. Defiant Battlegrounds, pretty cool activity, though. I am enjoying the Battlegrounds um, just as a general aspect. These actually look cool because I love bouncing back and forth between the Taken Realm. Honestly, pretty fun activity. Nice balance of difficulty and stuff we've got to do. Now, for Season of Defiance, we've also got the War Table. Now, the War Table gives a nice description of some of the things you're going to be doing. Season of Defiance... Collect Defiant Keys by completing activities throughout the system. You can get these things anywhere. Now, you can hold five of them, so keep that in mind. You gotta come back and use them every so often. But Defiant Chests with Seasonal Gear appear at the end of the playlist of Season of Defiance. Use a Defiant Key to receive additional reward of Defiant Ingrams. So that's one of the ways you're gonna get extra Defiant Ingrams. Use Defiant Ingrams at the War Table in the Helm to receive specific Seasonal... Season of Defiance gear and weapons. So basically your Defiant Ingrams are kind of your only currency. Nice thing is you don't have to manage it in your consumables inventory. It's kind of consolidated. And completing certain weekly seasonal challenges will award War Table upgrades. So, Defiant Ingrams. These are all of your gear. So all three of the classes armor you guys can see. And then all of the weapons for this season. Those are the ones that we're going to be able to get. And eventually those are the ones we're going to be able to focus and theoretically craft. Now, if you are curious how many engrams you have, since they did a little consolidation to some of the inventory, you've got your engram tracker. And you guys can see at the war table, I have 20. So I have 20 engrams that I can spend basically as a currency. I need to go dump these pretty quickly because they're useless at lower levels. Um, the engram tracker shows I have 40. I've got some at Gambit, some at Crucible, some at Vanguard from the stuff I've been doing. But the idea is your defined engrams are how you are going to basically choose to focus into weapons and armor. If you want a piece of armor, it's going to cost you two engrams and some glimmer. The cost went down pretty well, I think. Uh, the engrams are kind of a toss-up if I like them, don't like them, but the amount of time it takes to usually probably see an umbral engram, about the same amount of time you're going to see a defined engram. Now, I will tell you, you probably see defined engrams from... Uh, the end of activities, you'll see a lot of those. If you're running raids, some people are like sitting on a lot of those dungeon clears, things like that. If you're running activities and not just like running around in patrols, but you're actually completing activities or public events or strikes or nightfalls or dungeon clears or raids, you're going to see a decent amount of these. So make sure you are completing activities and missions and all of that type of thing. You'll probably see more of these that eventually you'll know what to do with, but there are ways to farm those. That's for another day. Now, you'll notice I have unlocked armor farcus f farcusing. That's a fun word. Armor focusing, uh, and I can choose armor. Haven't done weapons yet. That's literally the next thing I was basically going to show you. So when you have your defined engram encoding, what you can do is you can spend one engram, which is going to give you a piece of armor or weapons, which is kind of a toss-up. 
If I go here, one piece of armor is going to be one ingram and a thousand glimmer. Glimmer cost, not bad, not really a care. And the cost from one to two is not that bad. When you get up to weapons, the defined ingram cost to focus into a specific weapon is expensive. It's four ingrams. Uh, and that's going to, I'd basically be able to focus five weapons and I'm out. Whether I'm going for deep sights or anything like that, that's not a very efficient way to do it. Your better way to do it for a very long period of time is going to be focus into the Defiant Weapons general category. Because all of these should be craftable, to my knowledge, since it's the Queen's Weapons. you got a few on Neomona, but not all of those. That's, again, separate. But if you want to use your Defiant Ingrams the most, I could dump 20 Defiant Ingrams and get 20 weapons. So that is the way we really want to do this, but we need to unlock focusing first. So you're going to come over here to the Upgrades. And we're going to have options to spend upgrades. you notice I have literal, they're called war table upgrades. Now, you get war table upgrades in your seasonal challenges. Last week, it was literally the first three. It was like, complete the battleground of the week. Complete the quest of the week. And then spend a defiant keep. Basic, straightforward stuff. First week, probably did it. If you haven't, it's probably one of the first things that you'll do. Second week, it was complete the weekly quest. And then generate favors in seasonal activities. And we'll talk about favors at the war table in a second. They're pretty straightforward in general, though, I will tell you. So if you're wondering about where to get the war table upgrades, just go check your seasonal challenges. If there's anything you haven't done, they're going to be pretty obvious what you need to do. Nothing's too, like, vague on that type of stuff. So once you've done your seasonal challenges, you're going to have your upgrades. Now, the ones I picked so far, uh, one of these I had to test for you guys just so we knew. But the other ones are kind of what I thought might be the most beneficial to me. Now, this was last week. I haven't spent my two that I've got this week. Now, favors in and of themselves, when you start the season, what you're going to have to do is pick a favor. It's up to you. You only have to pick one. So I would probably hold on to your uh, war table upgrades until you're done. Now, if you're running as a team, it might be beneficial for you and your two other people that you play with to pick a different one. So you guys can kind of share some of the benefits. And I'll tell you there's one reason why, but it's kind of vague. Otherwise, if you're by yourself, find the one that's going to play into your build the most. And what basically happens is your final blows with something, this is heavy weapons, have a chance to create a favor that you and your allies um, can get to improve ability recharge. Now I'm going to put it on screen real quick and I'll show you what the uh, exemplar of justice, your ability final blows have a chance to create a favor that you and your allies um, that improves your melee recharge. So on screen you guys can see, even though I've got a little like damage icon kind of covering it up, but you can see the little floating like fist icon sitting there. It's just kind of this little glowy particulate thing around it. And if you pass through that, that's going to recharge your melee. Pretty straightforward. And then a similar thing would happen if you saw the exemplar of zeal. If you saw that one, you would see the little grenade emblem. You pass through that, your grenade's pretty much going to be recharged. So it's your call on what you think if you're going with a very specific melee build or class that you're running. And you think, hey, if I see one of these, it's going to be more benefit to me or if you'd much rather have your grenade ability. Now you notice I'm skipping the middle one. It's your call if you want this one, but your final blows with special ammo have a chance to create a favor that you and your allies that improves mobility for a short time. Overall, I'm not too worried about mobility in these things. If I'm gonna put a priority anywhere of something I have control over, I'm gonna either get grenade or melee energy depending on your build. Mobility, not really a big concern for me. If it is for you, maybe this boosts like a hunter stat and you know, away and your dodge comes up better, maybe, but generally, Pick one of these two, and then you're going to save the other two for pretty much your last upgrades. Then we get to the Defiant Vestments and the Queen's Guard Vows. Now, you saw I got the Defiant Armor focusing. I will tell you, this does not seem to be as good as the War Table last year. How do I know? Well, so far I've spent four of these things. When you're doing armor focusing, anytime you're running around, you have the option on your Ghost to pick a ghost mod that will have armor pieces with random stats you acquire will have a guaranteed minimum drop of 10 discipline. Now there's a reason people pick discipline because then it goes into the other two slots up top, depending on what you're doing. You know, people tend to focus on something in the bottom three versus the top three, but that is also a separate video for another day. But the idea is you'll see, I got 16 in discipline, got some resilience, got some recovery, some mobility and some strength, but it's a total of 61. This one here, I got a 62. This one here, I got a 61. And then this one here, I got a 62. No resilience, so not quite as helpful for me. Also, you know, class items don't really have stats. So I will tell you, if you are a newer player, and especially in the first week, you can get one, two, and three. There's not much reason not to pick this one. 
because if you're a somewhat newer player, you're trying to get some decent stat rolls to start, getting something in the 60s is not a bad way to go because now I'm not saying you're every time going to be in the 60s, but hopefully if Bungie's nice about this stuff, you're not going to see 58s and 59s. And depending on if you're going into a certain build, you're like, hey, I do want to lean into grenade energy for one of these things. You can pick that thing on your ghost, get a little armor focusing and help you start a build. Is this going to be the be all end all of armor? No. Is it artifice armor that has that extra slot you get from master dungeons? No. But if you're a newer player and you know artifice dungeons, which you may not even know what the hell I'm talking about, those could be far away. This is not a horrible place to start. Is it something a veteran player could, you know, skip over? Probably. But a newer player, it's an okay thing to get. Now down here, you'll also notice I picked spending a Defiant key at the end of a Season of Defiance Battleground. So I did a random activity. I got a key. I went to the Battleground. I opened the chest. If I have a key, it will automatically be used when I open the chest. And what it's going to do is it increases the chances of earning additional Defiant Engrams. As the Engrams are pretty much your currency to focus into armor and weapons, not a bad thing. So that's not a bad way to go. So my first week, it was one, two, and three. Because you don't need to load up all the favors. It's not going to help you that much, I promise. Generally, your build and your group that you play with are what's going to help in difficult stuff. So I would go one, two, three. And then I would just honestly keep working through because we've got week two, these opened. Week three, they're time gated. And week four, they're time gated. And we'll eventually get there. So week two, focus your defiant engrams into seasonal weapons requires that weapon in your collection. Uh, so you actually have to acquire each of the weapons to be able to get them acquired once. So you'll probably have to play the Defiant um, Battlegrounds enough to see each of the weapons one time. Once you do, then this will be useful. The other thing, focusing a Defiant's weapon and armor grants a chance to earn a Defiant key. So what we're going to do is I'm going to focus, because I'm not going to touch these and build like, like the final upgrade, because I just don't care. There's no real reason that I need to spend a war table upgrade when these are going to be better all the way down the board. So if I get this one and this one, I'm going to use up my war table upgrades. And hopefully next week, I'll be able to get these two. This one, the first Season of Defiance weapon you decode each week, will have Deep Sight Resonance. If you're working on unlocking the crafting patterns, this is a must. So next week, even if you just get one war table upgrade, buy this one before anything else. Now, the other week three one is spending a Defiant Key at the end of a Seasonal Battleground in which you receive favors of Grace, Justice, and Zeal will award an additional Defiant Ingram and War Table Reputation upgrade. Now, here's the thing about this one. If you're a solo player, this is nearly impossible to control because you're going to get matched with, made with people you don't know what favor they're going to pick and honestly trying to depend on this one, not really going to change anything. So, you can pick it and every so often it might help you, but the odds are not. Now, if you're playing as a, but there's not really a great other place to spend it, so you may as well still pick this one next week. Now, if you're running as a fire team, depending on how your fire team is set up, and if you guys haven't picked certain things yet, theoretically, if one of you had each one of these and you were kind of making all three of them, then in theory, you would get an additional Defiant Ingram every time, and some more table upgrade every time you're running through these things if you run with your buddies every time. Not always something you can control, and it would be beneficial to make sure it's like, hey, you know, make sure you're using your special ammo. If you're the melee guy, make sure you're using your abilities. If you're heavy guy, make sure you're using your heavies. And you can get some team benefit to doing this, but as a solo player with random people that you're going to match make with, I think this one is going to be tougher to do for a little while until everyone has upgraded all of these. And personally, just as a priority, they're not a priority. So you'll probably get it. You may get some benefit from it, but honestly, not that big of a deal. Finally, we're going to come to week four. When you earn a defined engram by completing non-battleground activities, you will earn an additional one. So if you get a defined engram from, say, I don't know, a dungeon clear or a raid or a strike or whatever, you just get two. So this is just kind of nice for any grinding that you're looking for, trying to just get more engrams to spend. This will be beneficial just across the board. And then, of course, spending a Defiant Key at the end of a Seasonal Defiant Battleground on Legend will increase the gear, the amount of gear granted. I don't know how these Legend difficulties are going to go. Right now, the difficulty seems to be a discussion point for the community. But in general, that's probably something you want to do. If you don't see yourself doing Legend very much, then maybe you could do these and then you could kind of spawn all of your own. It's up to you. But this is a priority here. And then this is also a priority. This one is kind of hit or miss as a solo player. This is going to take legend and some matchmaking or finding groups. 
And then these two, you can kind of just prioritize those as you fit. But I would say to start, of course, pick one because you have to, I'm pretty sure. Focus on getting your weapons, get a chance at additional defined engrams. And then if you focus, then you get a chance at more defined keys, kind of a nice cycle. So then what I would do, I would come in here. So you'll notice I haven't actually seen the grenade launcher yet, but I've seen everything else. And what I can do, I can either spend four engrams per weapon and focus into one, but there's no guarantee that this is going to be a craftable. It's not gonna, there's no guarantee it's gonna be a deep site, except next week you'll get one each week that way. So if you are focusing into priority, then you can focus into it. But honestly, even then, it's not that big of a deal because I would still probably pick this one for a while because unless you just have like 100 engrams to go through, if you pick this, I'm just gonna get a weapon. Now, I randomly got a deep sight one. That is just like statistical, who knows, for the video. But again, it only costs me one engram and 3,000 silver. So I can go through here. Sometimes you'll get one. Hey, there you go, I got my weapon. Uh, and again, you can actually get stuff that you've already got. Apparently, it's just gonna give me all the swords. There we go. But you'll notice you'll get a lot more weapons this way which is the whole point. Now, apparently I'm gonna be unlucky in the middle of recording my video because it's not gonna give me one, there we go. So again, but the idea is I could, notice how many weapons it took me. It took me 11 weapons to get two to drop. If I spent my five engrams on bows, for example, and I didn't get one of them as deep sight, I wasted my entire currency. So as you're focusing, uh, as you're working on unlocking craftable frames for all of these, just use the randomness for a while. At some point, you'll probably get down to like your last two weapons that you need, and then the randomness feels a little less helpful. But for a while, just keep chunking these in random because the cost, you can get 20 weapons or you can get five weapons for the engrams that I had. This is the better way to go. Uh, just a quick reminder, Defiant Engram here is one. It has no glimmer cost but it's weapons or armor. And if you're not really caring about the armor, that's kind of a wasted engram. This one is gonna cost you two engrams. And what it's gonna contain is either the Imperial Decree shotgun, and you can go look up the perks. It's kind of an older shotgun, not really anything too amazing. It also has the swords for each of your class specific swords. And those I will show you. So if we go into collections, we can go to weapons, shotgun. I don't even think it's upgraded. Like the Imperial Decree, it's this old one from the Season of Opulence, I believe. So it's not a bad one. It's got decent perks. I don't know if D2 Gunsmith can see the right perks right now, but it's got some okay options. I mean, it's a aggressive frame shotgun. So if you're a PVP person, maybe. PVE shotguns, not really doing a whole lot for you. When it comes to swords, we're talking about the Gold Tusk, the Death Razor, and the Throne Cleaver. This is Titan. This is Warlock. This is uh, Hunter. Now, the only thing about spending, trying to get a random drop on this, there are enough craftable, there's a couple of craftable swords that we can get right now, honestly. Like, I can craft, wait, and you can eventually craft these. So, in theory, you could go for them, but I got the other half and the half truce. So that's a void, that's an arc. There's probably a solar one in here, and there's a couple decent, this one's going to be craftable. So, it's solar, depending on what swords you have in priorities, but for me, those just aren't going to prior be a priority at first. But if I, you know, just am swimming in engrams, that is where you're going to get those is from the kind of recovered focusing, it's called. Yeah, recovered Leviathan weapons. So there is a reason to drop one of those. You know, I'll get an Imperial Decree and it's going to have the right symbol on it. And then I might get a sword. But will I be able to craft the, will I be able to craft the shotgun? Yes, you will. So those are craftable as well. So you've got a decent amount of craftables, but my priority would be look through some of the perks and see, and I will do a separate video for all of you guys to show probably my priority in focusing. But the easiest thing like these right here for one engram, one of six weapons, start unlocking all of this stuff. It's gonna be a good place to start. If you desperately need a sword, pop a couple of these. If you get a sword that's okay, keep it and use it for a while. But again, overall, I would say weapon focusing the priority. And then other than that, picking up your bounties, just kind of help you with experience because they're pretty generic. Defeat combatants with like art, glaive, sword, strand, they're kind of pretty universal. And then as you work your way through your ranks, remember, pick up your items here. Um, you're gonna get one of these three as you go. You're gonna get a couple defiant keys. And a thing to note about keys, the keys are capped at a total of five. Doesn't specifically tell you that, but if you get about five, that is your time to go run a battleground because at that point, you can't really go farm any more of them. You can farm Defiant Engrams until you are blue in the face and have your war table show 72, who knows? But the keys in and of themselves, if you see like five, 
maybe it's time to go run a battleground or two just so you can use a couple of those up. And that way you're not just wasting some that could be dropping by other stuff, if it's possible. If you're raiding with people, yeah, let it go. But if you get a chance, knock those out. I think that covers Season of Defiance, though, in general. This is kind of your new currency and Glimmer. So they did simplify it a lot, picking up these Defiant Engrams everywhere you go. I mean, if you're playing Crucible matches or Gambit or whatever it may be, whatever it may be, they drop from basically anything. And um, from that point, kind of check your upgrades, lean into those. And then for focusing, just don't waste the Engrams on specifics. Seriously, I can't scream this enough. Please spin them here first much better use, and then you get down to like your last one or two that you want to craft, then lean into those, craft them, and go. So if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like below, leave a comment if you got questions, anything uh, other than that. Thank you guys very much, and I will see you guys soon. If you want to find me on Twitch or Twitter, it is Ebontas over there. I will be streaming my raid run with uh, my group off and on over the weekend when we're live, so come check me out on Twitch. Right here on YouTube, though, if you guys are enjoying all these videos, please hit the subscribe button, hit the alert bell. Support has been great lately, so let's keep that climb to 100k going. Have an awesome one, and good luck!